picture this, Australia in the 1930s. The Great Depression is in full swing and times are tough. Farmers already struggling face a new threat, emus. These large flightless birds are everywhere and they're hungry. The emus are destroying crops, eating valuable resources and causing widespread frustration. These aren't your average birds. We're talking two million emus on the move. That's a lot of beaks to feed and eat they did ravaging crops and leaving farmers with empty fields and empty stomachs. Desperation sets in as farmers realize they can't outrun, outsmart or out-eat the emus. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The farmers at their wits' end appeal to the government for help. They need a solution and they need it fast before everything is gone. The government, hearing the plight of its people, agrees to take action. Thus begins the unusual and surprisingly true tale of the Emu War. The Australian government decides to deploy the army, yes the army, against the emus. Equipped with Lewis guns, soldiers are dispatched to the Australian outback to combat this feathered foe. The stage is set for a conflict that would forever be etched in the annals of history. The year is 1932. Armed with military might, the soldiers engage in a series of battles against the emus. They try to thin the numbers to protect the crops to regain control. Early skirmishes go poorly as the emus prove more elusive and resilient than anticipated. The emus, masters of guerrilla warfare it seems, refuse to play by the rules of conventional combat. They scatter unpredictably, making them nearly impossible to target effectively. Soldiers are often left firing at empty air, their pride taking as much of a hit as their accuracy. Learning from their initial mistakes, the soldiers try new approaches, realizing they've underestimated their feathered adversary. Military minds start devising new tactics. They mount guns on trucks, hoping that mobility will give them the upper hand in this unusual war. The emus, fleet of foot and masters of camouflage in the Australian bush continue to evade the soldiers. News of the war begins to spread and newspapers and politicians start voicing their amusement or dismay. Despite their continued efforts, the soldiers struggle to make a significant dent in the emu population. Frustration mounts among those involved. Facing escalating expenses and increasing criticism, the government ultimately orders the withdrawal of the troops. Without a decisive victory against the emus, who emerged from the conflict relatively unscathed, Australians adapted their strategies. In the wake of the emu war, the government continues to grapple with the persistent challenge of emu population control. New strategies like bounty systems come into play. Farmers, who haven't given up turn to alternative methods of protection like fences to safeguard their crops, hunters are paid a bounty per emu killed a testament to the enduring challenge posed by these feathered adversaries. These efforts proved somewhat more successful, at least in terms of giving farmers a fighting chance. The Great Emu War stands as a bizarre but true testament to both the challenges faced by Australians during times of hardship. Beyond amusement at the face value of it all, the event reveals a deeper reflection of human-animal conflict and the limits of our control over nature. What can we learn from a war fought and arguably won by large flightless birds? Is it possible to see the great emu war not as a defeat for humanity, but as the emu's remarkable survival tactic? Even today, the great emu war serves as a lesson, not just about the challenges of managing wildlife, but also about resourcefulness and our respect for nature. The image of out-of-their-depth soldiers battling a seemingly unstoppable force caught the world's imagination, turning the entire situation into a somewhat humorous symbol of resilience and chaos. Ultimately, the Great Emu War reminds us that our relationship with nature and how we approach conservation requires careful thought and innovative solutions. It emphasizes the importance of striking a balance, of coexisting rather than conquering. It invites us to ponder, can we coexist? How do we effectively manage emu populations without resorting to warfare? Learning to live in harmony with wildlife, it's a challenge we still grapple with today. 
So that's the story of the Great Emu War, a strange but true tale about emus, soldiers, and a whole lot of chaos. It's a story that is bound to make modern-day humans ponder the unusual and unexpected turns of history. It's a reminder that reality can be stranger and funnier than fiction. It makes you think, did we miss anything crucial about our place in the universe? What will happen in the next chapter of human and emu existence on our planet? What do you think? Drop a comment below with your theories.